Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. Okay, more mods. Something I thought could have been done better at the factory. These doublers, and that's what they turned out to be. I thought that they were uh, solid all the way through and they're really just patches. Um, they didn't uh, sand this edge right here. If you notice, I can just push against that. So, I mean, it's a ridge. And let me just slide down to the other end of the wing here. You can see that the covering, you know, doesn't lay flat against there. This actually changes the shape of the airfoil across the tip of the wing. And uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, it's not a huge issue, but um, it's just not good aerodynamics. I mean, uh, you know, you've, you've got, you know, an airfoil shape here and you're interrupting it with this big bump. Um, I mean, most of this part of the wing is flat. Once you get to this rib, second to last rib, uh, there's only so much curvature, but I mean, there still is some, if you can look at this, it's, it's thicker here than it is here. So I'm going to sand, I'm not going to worry about the back edge because that the covering's just going to drape across there, but I'm going to sand this or file this edge. I'm actually going to have to use a file. If I use sandpaper, the sandpaper, uh, you know, has a certain amount of flex to it, uh, especially if it's on a, a rubber sanding block. Um, so I'll end up sanding away some of the balsa wood, and I don't want to do that. I just want to bring this edge down so it's a little smoother. It's probably only going to, you know, about to here, uh, just that um, 1 32nd inch edge smooth that out like I've done over here because if you look here you can see that that edge just blends right into the wood and here you know it's it's a solid chunk and the covering has to you know go over that and then not have anything to anchor to along here and it it changes the shape of the wing um, and even if this wing is going to have almost no airfoil, then why not shave that edge and, and make it shorter and cleaner? So that means I'm going to, if I'm going to do that here, I've got to do the other end of the wing too. So what I'll do is I'll take the covering off the other edge uh, right along this area here. I'll uh, clean that up top and bottom. And then I'm just going to use some white covering and uh, do the wing tips uh, probably from about here over in white. I'm not going to worry about the airfoil or at least the hinge. I'm going to go ahead and cover this one uh, matching distance just because I uh, caught this with the, um, uh, the chuck of the Dremel when I was sanding here. I got a little low and I didn't realize it was going to catch there. And uh, so I'm going to do the same thing at the other end of the wing as well. And that's about it. Um, I had some blue covering, but it's a lighter colored blue, like a sky blue. And it's solid, not transparent. So that's not going to look right. I figured, uh, you know, might as well do white. The decals are in white. That tip end of the wing tip is already white. Um, there's a white stripe underneath here, so that white stripe will just continue out to the edge of the wing. Um, I figure that's the, the best way to go. I've thought about using some other colors. I've got some black. That is just going to look weird with the blue and the white. Um, purple, not going to work. Bright red, not going to work. Fokker red, not going to work. So white is going to have to do. There we go. Um, major difference. Huge. Makes for a much smoother shape. And the nice thing is the bottom has very little to be removed. The difference is mainly on the top. I don't know why they left that uh, like the way it is, but um, yeah, no worries. Anyway, it's uh, this is going to turn out very nice. It's good and strong. Um, I'm not going to have that airfoil issue. And uh, everything's going to be nice and clean. Wow. 
huge difference. This is just so much smoother and cleaner than it was uh, from the factory now that that, uh, that edge has been taken off and things have been rounded out. And uh, considering it was a bit of a hack and slash, the covering job didn't come out too bad either. Um, I didn't put covering over the tape like they did because these tape hinges are kind of stiff. I've taken off the tape here at the end and moved them. If the servo was in the wing, that would be a little better because it would be, you know, pulling on half the wing at it, you know, to either side. But when you're pulling from down here and you got to pull the whole length of this thing, by the time you get out to about here, you're probably, excuse me, the camera, by the time you're uh, out to about here, you're probably down about 30% because this is flexing. By the time you get to here at the end, you're probably only getting about 50% of the angle that you're getting at this end. Um, and that's because these hinges are really stiff. Now they may loosen up in time. One of the things I've thought about doing is uh, the same way that, um, the same way that these tape hinges have, um, uh, a crease I mean a, a cut area here so they're bending it at that point at that point at that point um, cut every other one of them or at least you know start that like out toward the wingtip area and um, cut through the covering uh, any place that there you know isn't a joint there that would probably help a bit you can you can see that out here, the space between the crossover points is longer than it is close in. So it is designed to try to uh, minimize the uh, amount of, of twisting of the, the, of the airfoil. Uh, and I'm sorry, again, I'm doing this without the tripod. Okay, if in case this isn't making sense, um, I'm just going to untape one of these and show you. Let's say that I start lifting it over here. Now, I've got my finger in here, okay? And look at how little it's moving at the wingtip. Um, let's see, there's probably a better way to do this. Let me try... Uh, weighting this down with, let me see what I've got handy that will work well. Okay, this should work. I'm just going to set a pair of diagonal cutters. So now um, the aileron is pretty much touching the surface all the way along here. So if I lift this up, you can see how much it's lifted there. And as I move along, you can see it's not lifting as much. It moves, it's just not as pronounced. Um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe in time, or maybe if I flex these back and forth a, a few dozen times, they'll loosen a little bit. Uh, maybe not. So um, anyway, that's just something that might prove to be an issue. Another thing to do would be to pull that tape all together and uh, just do um, uh, do the taping by hand uh, using like the Dubro hinge tape or something like that, or just do uh, mo what's called a monocoat hinge um, where uh, you let the covering create the hinge. Uh, We'll see. Anyway, the process is almost done. The wing's ready to go, uh, with the exception of gluing in the, uh, the two control horns. The push rods are already pre-bent, so uh, there's a slot on the side right here on either side. 
and uh, these push rods are going to go in the side and they're going to attach to the appropriate control horn here or here and as you can see they're already pre-bent so they're basically going to be just like this except they'll be inside the fuselage and right where my fingers are uh, that's where the horn will be and there's a little brass adjuster that's going to screw onto that horn so the next thing I need to do is take care of my uh, of the lines now that's going to be a little trickier the thing that makes it a little tough is the fact that you've got one here if it goes in that in that outer hole and then in the this one is going to actually be overlapping i wish that one of these servos was a little bit lower um if there was a little bit more space here I'm, i mean in theory uh, I could move these servos over a couple of millimeters. I could shave a little bit of that servo tray and move each of these servos outboard a millimeter or two so at least the lines aren't, aren't crossing right here. I'm going to think on this a little bit. And then I have to decide how I'm going to attach the lines to these. Now, what the instruction would have you do is basically you take this piece of wood here and you flatten out the surface and slide this. I'm having to do this with one hand. This is ridiculous. Okay, I'm just going to reshoot this part for you. Um, this is a standard airplane stand. Uh, they run about $20. I've got a couple of rubber bands here. I just looped uh, one rubber band into the other and I stretched them, you know, underneath and up and that holds the fuselage. So this is a good way for me to be able to, to work on this. There's all kinds of possible solutions. This is just something I've uh, come up with quickly that will hold the fuselage for me. It keeps the tail section up and uh, out of my hair. It's not, you know, banging around and, and getting knocked. And uh, that way I can uh, work on these connections and uh, get this rigged up. The only thing I find bad about this kit is that they tell you in the instructions that you can build this plane in 30 minutes. I think that is absolutely preposterous. If you hack and slashed this plane together in 30 minutes, it would be garbage. If you've built this exact same kit, like you're doing it in a factory, putting these things together, even then, I don't think you could do it in 30 minutes. Maybe if you had five different guys at different workstations doing things like one guy's gluing the wing while one guy's putting the tail section together with the springs and another guy is doing something else. I mean, it's, it's, there's just too much. If you do buy this kit, please follow my videos and please take your time with it. You'll have a much, much better plane. I spent more than 30 minutes hooking this fuselage to the board, putting up the, uh, the bubble gauges, truing out the fuselage so the fuselage and wing were level, and then leveling out the tail section, mixing the glue, re-leveling everything, making sure it was straight and true, and then giving it time to dry. That was a good hour, hour and a half if you count enough time to, to let this cure. If you if you remove the drying time, I easily spent 40 to 50 minutes getting, you know, everything set up to make sure that the stabilizer uh, was true to the wing, that the wing is uh, correct with the fuselage, it's square. Build your plane correctly. Build all of your planes correctly. Don't, don't listen to anything that tells you you can put this plane together in x amount of time because that's just going to put the rush on you and you'll end up with a bad plane i don't mean to 
repeat this or beat it into the ground, but it's very important. It really is. Nothing gives you a better result than taking your time. I mean, look, look at these two wing tips. You know, those are so much smoother. I mean, I would actually recommend anybody who builds this kit to take the time to peel off that covering. And this is the one that did not have the tab on it. Look at how much smoother that is compared to the other one that had these big air gaps where the covering is going off the edge of that piece of plywood before it meets up again with the wood. It's, it's smoother, it's a cleaner airfoil. It's gonna make for a better flying airplane. I mean, it seems like a small thing, just a little bit of an edge there, what's the big deal? It's only for a tip of the wing, what's the big deal? These planes are very precise. Uh, the smaller the airplane, the smaller things are, the, the more amplified small differences are. You know, a little bit of weight on one side versus a little bit of less weight on the other, and that plane doesn't want to fly level. You know, balance things, make sure the things are built right.